they tell me that uh, I told them that when we get these uh, plans uh, agreed upon or the way we want to handle them, like community facility, community relations, uh, small business, so on and so forth, just get the guys to go up there and walk them through. If they can't do it, then we just can't. Uh, we can't go through with our what we're going to submit and try to do it before we get it in the papers. Yeah. Now, they haven't been doing that. They sit back on their big fat fanny and smoke a cigar and look out the window and don't do anything. And then they just get hell beat out of them because every lobbyist in the country gets organized and you know, we don't know anything about it. And we just have to scratch it when it's over and say, well, I'll be damned that I'm sorry. Uh, community relations is almost gone that way. I don't know. It may be able to save it, but I've I've uh, talked to the Negro organizations, and I've talked to uh, Nick Katzenbach, and I've talked to Abe Rivikoff myself. But uh, Roger Wilkins ought to be in every office up there, and Nick ought to be in every office up there, and they ought to leave it up to anybody else uh, except the, t the folks that can go and try to get them committed. And, the, the organizations ought to be ready to go testify for Rebikoff's group because Javits is working on it from one end and yeah. the other crowd the other. The same thing's true of small bending. Gene Foley, I told him to get him in every damned office. Now they come in this morning and say, well, Joe Califano said that Larry said leave it up to Connor. Well, Connor won't even go home and have dinner with his wife. He's the goddamnedest fella I ever saw. You know how he handled the road bell and yeah. well, beauty well, and so on. never said that. And Gene Foley ought to be living with them. Instead of running around to dinners all over the United States, he ought to be up there working. Yeah. Now, uh, Connor was given, as I recall, three Republicans to work on, and Foley and the rest of the thing was uh, being left with us. Well, Spark Money is just mad as hell, and, and Evans is mad as hell, and every member's already signed a big letter to me, 100%. Uh, the Small Business Committee. Now, what they matter, they want their little loot and they want their Small Business Committee. And what I would try to do is find out why that committee can't operate with, under the Small Business uh, uh, Matters. Uh, j if it's in, uh, if it's in uh, uh, commerce, just the same as un-American activities operates when a lot of stuff's injustice. And uh, I see no reason why they ought to kill a Small Business Committee. And, if anything, I tell them we need them a little more. That they're going to have an expanded program. That we got an undersecretary of uh, commerce for business and development, and it's going to be they can have some other functions. They can kind of look after the development things, some um, and uh, economic development, and that they don't need to abandon that committee. That Sparkman's going to be a bigger man with a bigger committee under the reorganization he is now. Just let them steal whatever loot they want to up there, he and Joe Evans. Uh, that's the kind of a sale pitch that needs to be made to him. But I think he's already gone so far now. He denounced us yesterday and that, uh, that can't do it. But they've had three, four months around here. They said he can pull on over and sell him. And the president can't do it. And that bunch of job hunters can't do it. Yeah. Yeah, well, let me... Uh the community relations one I had talked to Nick about, I thought that that was in better shape as well, business problem. But apparently uh, that's slipping off the end, too, huh? Janet just given the mail on community relations, so that yeah. means the Republican side. Yeah. The liberals, uh, the Clark type, I don't know who they are, but that general type, are giving them hell on the other. Uh, so... Uh, the the ADA and that type they don't want they want to keep it in commerce. I don't know why the damn fools do because justice has to settle everything and justice has got some power. And they can look at his southern senator, say something. Sam Irwin he's against it uh, because he doesn't want anybody that's got any power handling the, these negro things. And if Wilkins <coughs> and Nick and them got any sense, why they can point out that Jim Eastland and Sam Irvin don't want it. That's right. But why in the hell would they want to follow Javits off and keep it in commerce? Or then they'll say, well, put it in HUD and just say, well, you don't think it, uh, that Weaver can, and the department don't think that he has much power in these things. He's going to need all the congressman senators he can get. He can't run any of them off. Justice is the only guy that's really got any independent. And the they have 
having a field day with Mansfield and Fulbright's, or Mansfield's report and Fulbright's and other outfits. It's very likely to just kill all of our legislation. It was on yesterday about seven hours on television, and uh, uh, Fulbright uh, is taking the Mansfield report, and some of them trying to, uh, and uh, I think a very, very disastrous break. That's my idea. Uh, the uh, uh, McNamara situation worked out for executive session, or are they still trying to express that? I don't know. I don't know. He, he and Wheeler are ready to testify anywhere, anytime, but they can't be very responsive on the, our strategy with China out in open session, uh, bombing China. You see, uh, last week, uh, Fulbright had a bomb in China with, uh, yeah. with uh, uh, Rusk. And Rusk was trying not to say anything that would uh, involve, uh, well, Stennis uh, went down Mississippi and bombed China all over the capital down there. Yeah. So then uh, Fulbright wanted uh, uh, his reaction, Rusk's reaction to Stennis bombing China. Uh, Rusk uh, didn't want to fight with senators and didn't want to comment on bombing anybody. The question itself, the connotation was such as bad. It's like beating your wife. So Rusk said, well, now, Senator, this is a statement I haven't seen. I'd like to look at it. Well, he said, if you don't want to be responsive, if you don't want to be responsive, you don't need to. So what you get into in these open sessions on military matters is if you if you uh, Tell them the information. You run out on the boys out there and endanger them. If you don't, you're not responsive. So you can't satisfy either way. Right. So the best way to do is just go and tell everything in the in session and then let the committee take people and eliminate that. That gives a, gives a, uh, encouragement to the enemy. Uh, we had the flag just two days ago. A river is now uh, giving McNamara transcripts. And uh, I talked to McNamara at some length. Finally, after a lot of conferring back and forth, he gave McNamara a copy of the transcripts yesterday. And I thought to myself, well, God, uh, and then we got it worked out so McNamara would meet with Rivers' so-called uh, strategy board on the Committee of Eight when he gets back here. And I thought, gee, it's finally there's a little touch of uh, sense up there in that group. And my God, an hour later, the full drive was blowing the whole thing wide open. Uh, well, it's been they're straight. They don't give a damn. They, they get first they, the minute they see a TV camera, they, they're gone. You ought to tell McCormick and, and Albert's day that Mr. Rayburn used to have his, his favorite expression, there comes a time when a man's got to put his stack in <laughs> playing poker. And I think you ought to have some pretty serious discussions you're still handling that Hill group, uh, by both with both Mansfield and uh, McCormick, and just say, now, if this crowd's going to run around with television, you're going to beat every goddamn man we got. Now, Johnson don't give a damn. He's not running for any office. Now, McNamara don't give a damn. They want to help. But if your people are going to let them run wild, and they are running wild since Mr. Rayburn's up there, this crowd just goes in every direction. Mendel Wilbers has got off one day here, Joe Edwards the next, and it's just a damnedest mess, and you've got no leadership. If you call McCormick, you say, well, I know how you feel, but you know Mendel says so-and-so. Instead of saying, God damn you, Mendel, don't you, you know what, you know what old man Rayburn used to say to him. And you know what, uh, uh, I would say to him if I was leader of the Senate. But he's, Mansfield's got his report now, and he's, he sits back like a pious priest, by God, just to, and they they pour the uh, stuff out of the filth on television. And, and uh, the men are there, and I'm not going to withdraw them, and they can undercut them all they want to, and they can raise hell with the government. They don't need to appropriate. We can just leave them there hungry and take up voluntary contributions. And, they can take poor Dave Bells and whoop them seven hours on television if they want to. But I think the time will come when they'll find that, uh, that there's a pretty strong group here, and I don't believe they'll, they'll win it. Because well, they they're the ones that got to be elected, not me. If I were running, that'd be different. But what I'll do is just say, here's 
Fulbright has tried to destroy every administration he ever had anything to do with. He ruined Truman, the RFC. Yeah. He right. came along and tried to ruin Eisenhower. He was ruining Kennedy of the Bay of Pigs. Yeah. And he's tried to run everyone he's ever been here because he's interested only in the New York Times. That's exactly right. Well, are you going to tell him that? Yep. And tell Mansfield, if he doesn't know it, that he, you just quote me direct as you've got guts enough to do. And just if he doesn't throw you out of the office, you just say to him that the president says that all his problem with Mr. Fulbright came because you're a goddamn trip. You came down here and wanted to take a trip, and Fulbright told everybody in town that I was trying to upgrade Mansfield over him, and he got the plane, and Fulbright couldn't get the plane. And now when he goes to paying me back for it, Mansfield runs. Well, I'll be glad to do that. Now, just tell him that. Just say that. Just say the president said when he goes to paying it back for him, by God, you crawl under the bed. He don't hear from you. I'll enjoy that. Okay. Okay.